Welcome, everyone, to Mystery, a podcast about myths and history. I am one of your hosts, Bryant, with my permanent guest, Cammie. Hey there, Cammie. Hey, Bryant. How's it going? Great. How are you? <laughs> I'm I'm okay. I'm recovering from COVID. Not fun. Today was the first day I felt pretty good, though. Uh, just breathing isn't fun, but everything else wasn't right. too bad. So, <laughs> Well, you sound great still. Thank you. So, Yeah, I'm trying. Uh, I hope I sound great when we discuss our topic today, which is going to be uh, a fun idea. It's a nice reprieve for us, too, um, because we have some plenty of topics to revisit because we're we're going to talk about some of the the first few episodes that we've done so um yeah, we started the show in what was it fall of 19 right i believe um, that's because covid yeah. was like right after that yeah and so fall of 19 um like august of 19 i want to say and uh the, the it kind of sucked the audio quality sucked and like we, we learned a lot um and it's gotten <laughs> a lot better since and so I, I actually pulled a lot of the older episodes. You can listen to them on Pinecast, our hosting website. If you uh, subscribe, like if you give like a buck a month or whatever, you can listen to the old shows. So if you want to hear, they're they're fun. They were um, all those episodes were done when Cami and I were in person, so we were next to each other. Um, but the quality wasn't that great, uh, sound quality wise. They were still fun. It was our banter, and I think we've just filled in a lot better too. We have a better like rhythm and way things go um so uh one of the topics that we had that was a really good one was romulus and remus who are they cammy they were the fabled founders of rome right so uh we talked about this before you may have heard it if you're an insane diehard fan but you, if, if this is a newer kind of rendition of it um we did pull up our old notes and kind of uh use them as a springboard to talk about it, but we also kind of brought in the attitude that we have with the more recent episodes, the way we've been doing things. So, uh, in the spirit of how the show goes, Cammy's going to give us a story um, based off of this myth, all of this this myth and legend, and then I'll kind of lead it a little discussion about um, it in general. Cool. Sounds great. <laughs> awesome. Well, Cammy, uh, take it away. Okay, so I used Livy Titus Livius. Uh, the History of Rome, Book One, Perseus.tufts.edu, and you can read the entire thing there. It's a it's a really great resource if you have any mm. thing of ancient Greek or Roman stuff you want to read. Aeneas, having endured the weight of duty in the face of increasing loss, finally reached his destined home. The land appeared to be hospitable, and soon the weary traveler met its king, Latinus. He welcomed the men to dine. Aeneas made it known that he and his men would stay through, the tr through treaty or force, for he was weary and his men were weary. They would make this place their home. And Latinus was humored by their intentions and offered Aeneas his daughter's hand in marriage. And through the bloodline of Aeneas there came two brothers, Numitor and Amolius. Numitor, the elder and rightful heir, exiled by his brother and his sons murdered. His daughter forced to the Vestal Virgin's lot, Rhea Silvia, who, though she was punished under the guise of chastity, she bore two sons to the god of war, Mars, and when her union was found out, she was forced into prison, and her sons were sent down the Tiber River. As the fates commanded, the boys were not drowned, but saved by a she-wolf, who wandered down the hills in her thirst. She saw the boys and raised them from the time until the king's flock master saw her with them and took them home to his wife so that they might be a family. And the boys grew up happy and strong, but the flock master was not a wealthy man. So the twins took up the good fight of redistributing wealth to the masses. They would dress in wolf skin and overtake wealthy men who traveled their path. And before much time had passed, the two were asked to meet the king for their crimes, each cunning enough to know they could not openly defeat their grandfather's brother in a fair fight. Remus met the man from the south and Romulus from the north, and each man brought with him the shepherds and bandits they commanded. With Amulius killed, the rightful heirs took their land, Remus the Avatine Hill and Romulus the Palatine Hill. But these sons of war knew peace only shortly. Being twins, they quarreled over who was the rightful ruler of the city. They used augury to determine their lot. Remus seeing birds fly above him first, six vultures. Then Romulus, though he was second, he saw twelve. 
Remus taking the omen of priority of a sighting, and Romulus the number of birds, each confident they alone had the right to rule. So Romulus erected walls to protect his fortress while Remus fumed. Once the walls were erected, the son of Mars ever turned towards war, jumped over the barrier, barrier and was killed by his brother, and henceforth Romulus gave laws to his people and gods and boundaries and customs and through the seven ancient kings of Rome, the great empire was born nice yeah and then it was yeah it was the those dudes until republic right was, <laughs> right all the kings and that's it yeah so um you know uh, one thing about revisiting this which was fun was i don't really remember much uh of anything so it was kind of cool to come in now since we've done so much and my knowledge is way better than it was ever before and I think like the first thing that struck me was that I, I, I doubt I really touched upon was um, th these guys are myth. These guys are mythological. Um, like they're as mythological as, as Hercules, probably not, you know, I, uh, he's definitely I, I, an older myth. It seems like, and has a lot more going on on for him, but these Side guys are notes, logical. Yeah. Very interesting fact about mentioning Hercules. Uh, Livy actually used Hercules. Are you getting there? To legitimize uh, the claims about did. Romulus and Remus, yes, I, I did. The only thing I saw was that it's claimed that he could be their papa too. Um, that he, Daddy could be, Daddy Hercules could be theirs. So uh, <laughs> that's the only thing I saw, really. But yeah, no, that's that's that is interesting, and that's it. That's that's what. Um, well, you saying that? Uh, that's where the myth really persists. Um, it's like a newer myth, really, for sure. So like. So the 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 whole myth was legitimized in like the AD, like like Virgil's Aeneid really helped make it like what it is, and that that's what really surprised me too was that it 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 seems like I, I was trying to kind of see what's the oldest like source of it, and it's kind of tough to say. Uh, all of the the writers lived in the early ad period for the most part um, that makes sense because that was the time when augustus was like hey i need you all to get together and write some stuff because i know i'm related to gods and stuff like that right yeah write it down yeah and and it, so it's really cool though because it seems like it may not be as old as certain other myths but it definitely like became one of the more popular ones um one of the coolest things there's tons of representation in art um one of the wildest things I saw was from the early 7th century AD, an Anglo-Saxon ivory box uh, shows Romulus. And, um, this is from Wikipedia. Shows Romulus and Remus in an unusual setting. Two wolves instead of one, a grove instead of one tree or a cave, and four kneeling warriors instead of one or two shepherds. Um, the interpretation, um, there's a runic inscription that says far from home, no duh. Um, and it's, so they're, they're sort of like, represented here the twins are like helpers um at voyages um their descent from the roman god war predestines them as helpers on the way to war the carver transfers them into the germanic holy grove and has woden or odin's second wolf join them um hmm. thus the picture served along with five other ones to influence weird um which means like time or it's also the fortune and fate of a warrior king um so i thought that was really wild you know seventh century a.d that you know that's that's when the anglo-saxons like took over roman britain which was still heavily influenced and of course you know christianity would would would, would become their religion roman christianity would become their religion eventually after they even after they settled and then 200 years later when the the vikings and the danes and all them come so i just thought that was really wild that i mean you, you we've seen like the she wolf statues suck, you know little kids suckling on that and and pretty pretty predictable things but to to see like the the spread of it go out that far um, was really wild. Uh, so, yeah, an ivory I, box. Can you think of another myth that's just about a city being founded? Like, I'm sure there are. Yeah, and you know, I was actually I was gonna try and like add something uh, regard because the word foundation myth is used, but it is such a wide ranging topic, and and it's it can be it, it can be towards so many things, not just like a specific place. Um, but that this is like a very textbook foundation myth that's very easy to kind of mention but you're right yeah this is this is pretty unique in particular um as far as it goes that uh, the way it, it was and again i think well, it's, it's important. so like involved i think is why mm -hmm. it's interesting because it, you've got 
Aeneas over here and he's the founder, but then also you have these two kids that are the founders. You have the, right. the Kings, you have the Etruscans that we have to defeat or, you know, or yeah, assimilate. have them join their right. society. Right. And then you, you have, I think with other myths, like I, I believe like Athens had like a myth or sure one of those uh, cities in, in Greece. And, and it was just like, Hey, this happened. Right. But this is so overreaching. Yeah. <laughs> it, I do have places. a note. There's a note from Wikipedia that says modern scholarship approaches the various known stories of Romulus and Remus as cumulative elaborations and later interpretations of Roman foundation myth. So you hemorrhism in a nutshell, it, it, these th similar things could have happened. There could have been kings and hills, uh, a set of twins that got really popular. It, what's funny, I, I it was in, um I think, in like Ovid's version um, of them. What, uh, Remus dies by like jumping over a in, oh, in Livy's version, Remus dies simply, they say simply died after jumping over Romulus's wall, which is thought to be a sign from the gods. So just like parkour gone wrong. <laughs> um, and so maybe that happened. Maybe there were these twins, they were flipping and flopping on walls. One fell and they're like, whoa. And then they're just like, well, maybe we shouldn't call it after him or something like that. So, um, Remy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Reem. Let's say, yeah. No, no, no. Not, not happening. Sorry. Um, but yeah, yeah. And that's so, you know, the Aeneid was Virgil's epic that was commissioned by Augustus to help legitimize things. It was sort of like, let's let's history and myth were the same thing at this time period. And so it was like and he just wanted to include himself in on this. And Augustus did. And so Virgil, a great writer, he, he wrote this epic, the Aeneid. It was about Aeneas. And it basically explains like the post Trojan War. Um how basically that was the focal point for all things great and then that those people that that fled troy became uh the 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 romans the, that we know today what i thought was cool though too is and I, I i kind of like knew this but forgot um part of the 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 stories and many of the the sources I, and all so yeah livy um dionysius uh, ovid cassius dio all of these are historians philosophers ranging from the late or the, um, the very, very late BC to the late ADs um, that wrote on this, that well-known sources that, that talked about this, um, where we get all this from. But they talked about um, how uh, the the twins before the death of um, Remus and stuff like that, uh, they had a great victory against the local Latins and the Sabines, um, which were peoples in this area. And they... Um, the the, the first, this was the first triumph for for Roma for for the the people that were here. They um so one thing they, there was a lot of apparently there's it was a lot of dudes in Rome. They they just the way that, that things had worked, and they were like, oh, we need we need ladies, we need to keep growing. And so they they tricked the Sabines and the Latins with the festival um uh at the uh, the festival of Cronus at the Circus Maximus. This is from Wikipedia, and then they got all the dudes distracted. You know they were playing darts and hitting hammers and stuff and uh they took all their ladies and then they were like well you can't do that we're going to war they beat them and and they did they 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 either it says that they either sort of like beat them or uh assimilated them and so, that's such a roman thing throughout i the remember this years. um story of, of course but like i remember another verse where it was like the ladies were like just kind of chose the men sure. i don't remember the source for that i wish i had looked it up i didn't it even think so about it them. but it was kind of like oh yeah this happened they were at the circus maximus and then when they started um fighting and stuff the men the women were like oh the romans are men are real men <laughs> these other men are not real right. men, so we're gonna stay with them yeah <laughs> I, I i just think it was cool because you know rome is kind of credited with the first you know having the citizenship idea you know you don't have mm -hmm. to speak the primary language you don't have to be from the be from rome you can be a legitimate citizen um just by being under the sphere of of rome a, a roman citizen and people you know uh when when mehmed the conqueror destroyed Biz, uh, constantinople he took the title sultan of rome that's what he called himself you know like so this that was such an important like name and idea um 1400 years later and so uh this story you know, again, that could just kind of be like, well, maybe there was a great joining of the, the people that call themselves the Latins, the people that call themselves the Sabine came together with these other people and, and they did the, you know, they, they united or, or maybe a, a you know, a, a King or some, someone was able to kind of pull them together, kind of like Genghis Khan did. And so I, I thought that was a, I, it's cool. I mean, it's, it's, it's fun to think about. And I, I, like I said, I, I just, 
to think about them being myth is like weird because they're so like new, it seems like. Um, but yeah, the connection with um, the Titan Rhea giving birth to them, the, the, it definitely makes it mythical, like so freaking mythical really fast. And, and it's really fun to see that. And I, uh, I also, I, we got to give a shout out to our boy um, Tiburnus, the river god for the river Tiber. Um, he was incredibly influential in a lot of the stories. Uh, he's the one who like like sees them going down his river. He's like, whoa, what the hell? And then he plucks them out and gives them to a, a wolf that um, lost its own pups um, in, in some of the stories. So, um, and, and I, this kind of went me down, not a lot on Tiburnus, um, or sorry, Tiburinus, Tiburinus. That's what I meant to say. Tiburner, Tiburinus. Um, Tiburinus was an incredibly important local god, very understandably so, it's a source of water. Um, and uh, later, he later rescued and married Rhea, the mother of the twins, um, and saved her from being killed. Um, we, we have tons of evidence of him being, uh, apparently May was when you would sacrifice things to Tibur and um, did, do things in honor. Tw 27 straw dummies were, he was honored with, apparently. That's what Wikipedia says. They were called the uh, Argae. Wicker Man then, right? That's what I thought, yeah. <laughs> so um, that was really fun. Um, and Tiberinus uh, helped Aeneas too after his arrival um, in Italy from Troy. So um, he was really like kind of behind the scenes, just as influential and helpful. And he got a wife out of it too. Good for him, right? Uh, he seems he seems pretty chill as far as like all that goes. Um, it just, it, 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 he, he seems, it's it's really cool to think of this. He's very local. He's not, no, no mention of Zeus on his Wikipedia page or, you know, like just right. <laughs> no, no screwing or killing or brothers or sisters. Just like I, I have a river. I make more rivers. That's it. That's all that's going on here. And I'll save these twins from drowning. Um, just give me some straw, man. Every May, please. So, uh, yeah, a really fun story. Um, Cami, thanks for bringing it back up. Uh, I, we're excited to talk more about some of these older stories that we we did touch upon because we had some really good topics, some some bangers early. But we're going to re, uh, redo them in today's modern technology world style um so we hope you enjoy it if you do want to listen to those old ones go to our website um you can uh look us up on pinecast i think it's just um hold on i can find it out yeah mystery.com slash or sorry pinecast.com slash mystery or on mystery.net um i think it will take you to our pinecast page too you 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 can give a little bit of a buck or whatever it'll let you do and then it'll open up all those old episodes for you. They're fun. They're fun to listen to, but the audio quality is just so rough. I didn't want a new listener to come in and be like, what are these guys doing? And then running away. If you didn't run away, if you listened to this whole episode, though, we appreciate you. Let us know what you think. It's a new year, which we already had a couple episodes. I know that, but this is one of the first <laughs> that we've done actually in the new year. Um, we're you know, still going strong. Um, we'll keep everyone updated as things go on, but please expect more content. Cami, this is a great story. I, I like looking back at this. I, I, well, maybe we should go back and do the Iphicles, the brother of Hercules one. Although that, that was a pretty I, is good that, one. I feel like, yeah, I feel like that was done yeah, after was we started this. That was um, maybe this way of recording yeah. the stream yard. I'll take a, I'll take a listen. I think it was a Skype one. I don't think we have video. Oh, uh, okay, okay. That was a that was a really fun one though. Yeah, That's I do what... like the the Roman ones because we do Greek a lot, but there's right. not. Yeah, but this right, is like yeah. specifically Roman. This and, doesn't and, have anything to do with well, it does with Troy and stuff. Yeah, like but a little bit, but not in a crazy way. And and you know, I, I could barely tell you the difference between them um back in 2019. You know, or, <laughs> I mean I could, but like I, you know, I my brain wasn't my brain wasn't there. Now I can lay like, oh yeah, sixth century, Romus and Rainus, BC. Yeah, I got you. The Latins, the Sabines, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um anyway, uh, I think that's all I've got really on the topic. Cami, is there anything else you'd like to jump in on? I do want to um, mention that the the term she wolf. Oh yeah. So that is akin to a term that we use today as an insult for women. That's a female dog, basically. Sure. And that so they also said that perhaps uh, Livy said this. It was Lucretia who was the um, wife of the farm or the uh, king's master that found. Right. Um, the children. So it could have been because she was a loose woman, quote unquote. Sure. She was actually a she wolf. So, oh, like it was like a right, a like term. the like it's like yeah. I oh that like the B word and yeah, yeah yeah like oh you're such a 
you're such a bug. I hate you. And then right. all of a sudden, like I, over time, like I turn into a bug in stories of retellings. Yes. Yeah. Right. No, uh, Frank that's really, Kafka is just, yeah. What, yeah. <laughs> that's a wonderful, yeah. That's a wonderful example of you hammerism. Absolutely. It could have been, yeah. Like a direct literation. I remember, you know, another, one of my favorite, um, when we call, talked about the, um, the Norse and Nordic dwarf concept, mm -hmm. how that there's, there's ideas, how, that word please listen to this episode it was really fun how the word dwarf was a uh kind of got confused dwarves were like demigods and the word that they used for demigod was like lesser or smaller god but they would call them dwarfs but they weren't like physically smaller but they weren't it, diminutive physically but it, just but it turned lesser than into that eventually because you'd be like you know you'd be from denmark and he'd be from norway you speak a similar language and he's like yeah but he's like the dwarf and he's like 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 what do you mean like that and they're like yeah yeah but like but like not he's like that but he's not like you know and then all of a sudden he's like okay well whatever and then gimli from lord of the rings is born <laughs> that's how it goes yeah though that's a really i really like that i that's a, a really awesome i you hemorrhism blows my mind every single time we mention it as you can tell um I and I, I actually have to leave with one last thing too before I, I finish up the show. Um, I, I one of my first one of my sources was ancient EU's article on Ramus and Remus. Um, it was a just a great take of talking about it. Um, very like eloquent way of putting it. They actually, I, I they're now worldhistory.org. This happened in March of like 21. I hadn't used them in a while. I just like they wait, which website my, is ancient EU? Oh, ancient EU I didn't is know now that. Okay, yeah, worldhistory.org. Yeah, they changed in um like March of 21. They changed okay. themselves because they're not about ancient EU as, anymore, really. They're about everything. So they're they're uh, worldhistory.org. And so um I and I I don't know how I stopped using them. I just didn't. So I'm glad to have them back. And yeah, they have a wonderful write-up um of the myths and legends of this story of Romulus and Remus. So worldhistory.org, Romulus and Remus, if you want to read more about it. All right, Cammy. That's it, yeah. Yep. Cool. Everyone, thanks for joining us. We will see you next time. Get ready to howl like a she-wolf. Oh. Ow.